relationship with food. That's interesting. <laughs> yes, because, you know, we it's this the notion of being in control, you know, of, of our food, you know, and, and so if I have control of my food and if I don't have control, what does that make? What does that say about me as a person? And so, you know, taking back our own power and saying, I have the right to choose what I eat, how much I eat, because more, more times than not, many of people, and depending on where you were raised, like, I'm going to be quite honestly, I was raised that, you know, women don't go back for seconds. So breaking down that whole notion of, you know, what women should do, feminine women, femininity, right? You don't go back for seconds. You don't clean your plate. So I, I address that in conversation, uh, just talking about what are some of the, the comments that you were uh, told when you were growing up about eating and then and, and break that down. So it's really, it's, a, it's, it's very, um, in depth, Francois, it is in terms of looking at how we can liberate our bodies and our minds. It's not just about being positive about, oh, I like my breast or I like my hips, right? You know, what is it that you, what is it that you like about them? Why do you like that? Is it because, you know, someone else has told you that? Yeah, and that's usually what it and, is. It's some external piece and it's, it's not external. internal. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when, when I, when I meet with women, it's really, um, it's, it's really peeling back layers, deep layers. I mean, just layers upon layers upon layers, um, and having these conversations, um, so hopefully to have them to think differently about the ways they, they, they view their bodies and how they were raised in the relationship with their food and being okay with if I'm hungry and I want to eat, you know, <laughs> some chips, I'm going to eat it, you know? So I talked to, talk to them also about mindful eating, you know, mindful eating. Why am I, why am I eating right now? You know, is this, and, and, and thinking about the taste and being present with the food, you know, so it's, it's shifting this, this notion about f- feeling guilty about eating. And that's powerful in itself. I mean, because there is such an addictive relationship that so many of us have with food and it continues because the guilt comes in versus taking control and recognizing that you do have power in yes. and, and this. And, and that totally um, transforms that conversation about yes. how we see ourselves. You know, you talk about in your work this idea of sister circles and that obviously there is power in the collective. So you not only work with people individually, but you tap into the collective wisdoms of groups to really help women in this space. Talk about what, what that looks like and what's the process for that. So I love my sisters. I mean, we are, I mean, as you say, tapping into the wisdom is so important because we learn so much from just listening and sharing And one of the things that I know is that healing, one of the ways in which we heal ourselves is through sharing our stories, sharing our experiences. And within the sister circles that I facilitate, we're able to do that. And so I offer the opportunity, particularly around self-care. How are we taking care of ourselves? What does it mean to take care of ourselves? Um, be, this beyond the hashtag self care, how it's been co-opted. So I provide opportunities for women to gather together to have conversations about particularly self care practices. And then I also have a self a a circle, a sister circle um, in the summer that I run that deals with body because you know everybody wants to talk about the summer body, right? Right. And so what I, I have <laughs> have my own way of um, of calling it the summer B-O-D-Y, be your own definition of yourself. I love it. <laughs> and so that is my that is my summer um, sister circle that starts where we have conversations of this beauty, this beauty within ourselves, you know, and defining yes. our own body because, you know, you know, going to. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to have these conversations about 
or or the media and folks on social media are going to be talking about, okay, let's get that summer body. And so I said, no, let's have the summer B-O-D-Y, be your own definition of yourself in this sister circle. Yes, I <laughs> love it. So your methodology is fascinating to me. You know, so I'm about to go academic in this. Uh -oh. um, talk about what is photo voice methodology? Because I did action research and which is, you know, and, and similar to what you did. It's having people co-create the research with you. How did you use photo voice to bring together a group of women to talk about body liberation? What did that look like? <laughs> I, first of all, I am a photographer as well. I don't know if I if you said that or not. <laughs> and so, you know, it was it was great that I was able to tap into one another one of my passions, which is which is photography. And so, as this photo voice is a um, an action research um, uh, framework of methodology and. Uh, photo voice is a way in which, as you said, we co-create my participants. I didn't even call them my participants. They were my sisters slash co-researchers. They came together. And the purpose of the photo voice is to elucidate issues within communities. And I, in turn, used it to elucidate the issue of um, the lived experience of Black women and their bodies. And so it it really was, and, I, and there are many folks, communities that have used photo voice to show, to get the communities involved and say, you know, here's an, here's an issue in our community and our community members are right here to tell the story. And who best to tell the story and who best to share the story in images. And so uh, that's what they did. So there weren't any um, any pictures that were identifiable. So I had to talk to them in very um, um, concrete ways. Like I needed, I had to show them like you can you can describe images of your you know your body lived experiences abstractly, you know, and or you can be very concrete, you know. And so it was just wonderful the ways in which um, they did. So let me give you an example. So one of the um, one of the sisters who says that she, one of her lived experiences that she around body image is that she hides behind hoodies, you know, wearing the hoodies and sweatpants. And she took a picture, just a very basic picture of uh, a, her hoodie and sweatpants, you know, and she talked about that, how she hides behind wearing um, behind those clothes because she doesn't feel good about her body. Then I had a sister who um, loves her hair, her locks, her hair, her, um, her locks, her natural hair. And so she took a beautiful picture of her, of her hair. And so one of the things that I know, and I'll just tell you that um, I was able to share their stories, their experiences uh, report their their experiences in poems using their words, and let me tell you, it was so I mean amazing, beautiful, and very emotional for me because as I wrote the poems using their words, I too continue every time I you know reread the information and and watched the videos, um, I was again you know I embodied their their experiences so this particular sister who talked about her hair um this is what she said this is the poem that i crafted um, as a result of what she said we were taught to hate our hair conform to a more european standard of beauty and not even that was a standard of beauty just what was accepted i have rejected that my entire life conforming to that standard I appreciate the thickness, the fullness, the rejection of the conformity. And so it was just a very moving, moving study for, 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 for me as well as for my sisters. 
It is awesome. I mean, I got to see pieces of it and I am so proud of you. I want people to know how to reach out to you. So how can someone contact you to get individual coaching or even to be a part of one of these sister circles? How can they reach you? Absolutely. Um, so my email address, I'm going to give you two because I like to give, provide opportunities. Uh, y DeVoe, D-E, V as in Victor, O-E, at antioch.edu. And then I'd like to give my uh, other email address, which is I-Y-A-L-A-M, as in Mary, I, at Holistic Alchemy and the number eight dot com. So Y DeVoe at Antioch.edu and Ia Lami at Holistic Alchemy 8.com. And we'll also put this up on the site as well so that people can get in contact with you because I think there's so much value and what you're bringing. You made me think about when I was a kid and I was developing early, how I would hide, you know, and, and wear big clothes and put my arms in front of me to hide because I didn't want someone to see me. And, and I knew what was happening to girls who were developed and how they were being treated by men and boys. Mm -hmm. And so you just brought all that back to me. And I would encourage people to talk with you so that they can unravel that stuff that happened as a kid, because it shows up in who we are as adults today. And so Falami, Dr. Falami, I want to say <laughs> thank you for being on the show. And thank I encourage you. people to connect to you. This has been another episode of The Tapestry. I am Dr. Francois Booker Drew, and you can reach me at info at drfrancois.com or at drfrancois.com, where you can learn more about why I enjoy stories and the power of relationships. So thanks again for being on the show and for another wonderful episode. Thank you.